What's up everyone, my name is JM. I'm here with Respect My Region. Uh, we're in beautiful Southern California in San Diego. We're gonna be interviewing a band called Blue Hour. Up and coming band based out in San Diego. We're gonna go be going to a show, be doing an interview, get some food. So let's go. So we just pulled up. Um, they're running shows before their, I mean tests before their shows. So we're gonna go see um, them practice and stuff, so. You can hear the music all the way down the block too, which is pretty sick. Hopefully I don't get fucking run over by a car right here. Hold on. How you doing? Pretty good. What's up, guys? Nice. How you doing, bro? Yeah. Owen. What's up, oh, right? Andy? You got the hair back and everything, too, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna hop in. What's up, What's your name, bro? RJ. RJ? Nice to meet you, bro. It's right in here, but if you want to. JM. JM? Yeah, I'm JM. <laughs> Out for the sure. way we want it's it. Close, wow. But then we had like, like, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a synth guy, we brought a synth guy, and it like made it so like, we think about the bird sparkly. So, yeah, like, yeah that's just put it together. It is yeah. Yeah. Wait, so how, you guys have moved some members around, so what happened? We kind of let him go. <laughs> like, he was all right with going too. It wasn't like. Was that like a difficult conversation? Oh, yeah, yeah it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like two years. Maybe there's the, the lead singer gone. <laughs> oh, jeez. Let me do the leg work on that. <laughs> 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 it was fine, though. We were still doing good. Sometimes hard decisions need to be made in order to take the next step, and Blue Ira had encountered one of its first a couple months back. The bands used to have another lead singer before Ashton, but unfortunately, due to creative differences in scheduling, Blue Hour made the hard decision and went their separate ways with a former lead singer. When I asked members of the band about it on and off camera, they seemed very uncomfortable talking about it. But this is one of the many hard truths in being in a band, especially with people you consider friends. Growing up, like it depends a lot where you live, like really has a big determination on like what you listen to. So like, how do you think like growing up in the area you did like influence the way you view music and like you, you create it now? Well, I, I would say, I wasn't that big into the music scene at all, like mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. It was just kind of like my dad is like the biggest source of in, like music inspiration I've ever had. It's just like he's an avid music lover and doesn't even play an instrument. He just loves everything music. Mm -hmm. And so like his taste is just, it goes from everything from super old to super new. Like it just, it's always evolving. He's always into like vinyl. And so I've always just appreciated his love for music and that's kind of what got me into starting music myself. When did you start like actually playing guitar and like doing all that stuff and decide like oh shit like I'm actually pretty good at this? Um, I still don't think I'm pretty good at this but um, <laughs> I started playing piano my parents put me on piano back mm -hmm. to like my dad put my me on piano my sister on guitar and my brother on drums. He was trying to make a band. He was trying to make a band. <laughs> he was literally trying to make a band and that's uh, so all of us hate, I hated piano. Yeah. Everyone hated piano, like their instrument. And, but then my sister had her guitar left over. So then like 10 years later, I'm like, I kind of want to try that out. And then I just kind of grinded like from like the start of high school. It was just like a little bit of like a so thing like I could eight, do. Eight years. Yeah, it's probably eight years now. Yeah. Eight years probably been off and on like sometimes, yeah. but like. Yeah, about eight years. And when did you meet all your other bandmates? So, um, my, that's kind of a funny story now, but 
I met Julian, who was in the band previously. Yeah. Um, he was good friends with my girlfriend, but my girl, not, it was just my friend at the time, and like they were just like hometown friends. Uh -huh. And she introduced me to him at a show, like a little house show. And we just had similar taste of music, and we wanted to start something. And I knew Judd from school. Judd knew, or no, Julian knew Indy just from like being in the music scene and it just kind of pieced together and it like fit really well yeah like the four of us we fit really well like we got along really well we hung out like every day just writing music playing covers like we started just playing covers like every band does mm -hmm. thinking that like it's just fun to play covers and get the bands going i mean we're gonna play covers tonight because i don't think i'll ever want to stop playing covers because it's like sometimes they're just fun but yeah we met them met them and it just kind of clicked and it, it worked and everyone was like well Indy just started playing the bass so he wasn't even like good yet and then he got and you still oh, that's sick he kind of just started and like he could like play like the root notes and like yeah. he, he could play along but now I like he's probably like the best bassist I've, se I've seen in the, yeah, in the scene really, like he's I've great he's good so like he's really put like a grind into his stuff and Judd's amazing Julian was great too like everyone just was locked in mm -hmm. so it was really good but anyway the name Blue Hour came again from my girlfriend um, she was hanging out with the old singer and they like were talking about band names and I think he mentioned something about like blue hours like the time of day after the sunset where it's like the sky's just like super like a dark blue mm -hmm. um, and like she's like that's kind of a cool band name like you guys should go with that and I'm like yeah <laughs> well I didn't do that he did <laughs> but yeah we're here at the venue uh, we just pulled up they're getting the everything set up they don't, have a, they, don't have a, they don't have a drum rug or anything. You should have seen Ashton's face while they came. It's pretty, it's pretty hectic, but uh, I think we're about to go get some food and figure it out, so let's, let's go in. We got some food. We went to uh, Prince Street Pizza down in San Diego Mission Beach. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When and if do you think you'll ever like hang this up? I mean, I don't care as much like where it goes. Like I'm giving it a good effort. Yeah. So like it either goes where it goes, or I'm having fun while doing it. So I don't like. Yeah. So like, even if like, like you're like say like 35 with like three kids, you're still gonna be like performing at Beachcomb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like I'm not like thinking about that. Like, you're not? No, I'm not thinking about when I'm 35 if I'm gonna be playing at Beachcomb. Like, uh, uh, no, I'm not gonna be thinking about that. <laughs> okay. Like I, there is a foreseeable end to it if it doesn't go anywhere mm -hmm. but I think it's go it's gone farther than I never expected it to really yeah way farther where did you expect it to go then when you first started no I expected to do like house shows and at SCSU and then we like we played a festival in Guadalajara like <laughs> what the yeah super rich guy and he like flew us out there got us a super nice hotel two rooms in a hotel the Hard Rock Hotel in Guadalajara and yeah, we just like it felt like we made it there. <laughs> it was sick. Yeah, everything covered. So it's... you think you're not even thinking about that? That's not even a thought that crosses your mind at all. What? But like when you'll give it up? Mm, no. No, if it, if, it, if too much gets in the way, then yeah. But like the way it's going right now, I don't care if it takes over. Okay. If somebody takes over, I'm fine with the with the time I'm giving it right now. Yeah. After talking to Ashton, we made up with Judd to get his perspective on music and the band. What gravitated you towards drums? Because I know a lot of people who uh, do drums tend to be like more outgoing or reserved. So, like, what do you think you fit? Yeah, in? I think it's definitely like not 
Like, I don't enjoy being in the spotlight, you know? Really? Yeah, I just want to be back, but he, like, hit in a little <laughs> bit behind the drums, for sure. But, I don't know, I was 10, I was like, I, oh, I want to play drums, like, this This seems really, it just clicked, you know? It, yeah. just, it just was something that I wanted to do. Did your dad, did your cool. dad or your parents, because they seem to be pretty, pretty supportive of your music Oh, they were, they were super supportive. Is it cool if I roll down the window? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It was they were they were pretty supportive. My mom never let my dad play music. Why? His his dad, what my grandfather who died when my dad was six was, oh. uh, like a famous uh, trumpet player. Are you serious? Yeah, he played he played with like Cal Jader and and um, Miles Davis in the seventies uh -huh. like, right before he died. It was pretty. That's he was big time. But he, my, I think my grandma just like saw him just fall into the, you know pit of you know like drugs and staying out yeah. late. They actually met at the the bar we're going to. Are you and serious? Now, yeah, they met at the beach camera. Right? What the? Fuck? Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be like, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's gonna be a good atmosphere. Yeah, and then we got there. the bike yeah. on. Who knows? Yeah. Like, exactly, <laughs> bro. Yeah. When, when, if ever, do you ever think you'll like hang it up and be like, okay, I'm kind of done with this, or do this? Do you think like performing? I'll never. never. I'll never. I'll never give up music. No. Even if it's just like playing little bars, like what we're yeah. doing right now. Like, it's just so good to have in your life. I think and. It just like it gives you something that an interpersonal connection with people that are are musicians that yeah. a lot of people don't like Ever get. experience. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. So I'll have it for my whole life. I'll be playing music my whole life, um, even if it you know doesn't pay the you know the, pay the bills, pay the bills, and a mortgage. And so it's like the love for like playing the instrument. You know that. Yeah, that really is the only thing that matters. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're thinking about the instrument, not like necessarily. How many people you're playing for? I don't know. Played so many shows, like no one there. Yeah. But it boils down to just a little oh, bit. Oh, this looks great. <laughs> Get back. <laughs> it's back in here, bro. <laughs> it's crazy. like you were cheating on me earlier. Hey, I don't know if I'm gonna go. Well, how are we doing out there? Has everyone, everyone got a drink? That's what I like to see. We're Blue Hour. We're going to start in just a second, guys. There's something so beautiful about seeing people do what they love, especially doing with the people they enjoy. After talking to Judd and Ashton, it reminded me to do things for the passion of it. I've seen Blue Hour play in cram backyards, and now seeing them go to LA and play music festivals in Mexico is really inspiring. These people are in it for the right reasons, for the love of the sport. When you're up and coming, it shouldn't matter who you're playing for, but that you're actually playing. Most people get into music for the fame of it and the idea of it. Blue Hour should be a reminder to all of us. That when you are doing things, lead with passion. Everything else will fall into place. And as far as the show went, they absolutely rocked it. <laughs> 